In this video, I'll show you how to prepare an Illustrator file exported directly from ArcMap for further editing in Illustrator. There are a number of artifacts of the ArcMap export that it's convenient to do away with, and this is roughly the procedure I use every time I open and start to use an ArcMap export. So the first thing you'll run into is this little warning that pops up saying that the file that ArcMap exported contains text that was created in a previous version of Illustrator. It says the legacy text must be updated before you can edit it. And this is related to the fact that the engine that ArcMap uses for producing an Illustrator file was uh, initially created with code uh, from a version of Illustrator that is many years old. And so the style for the text string that it uses is really pretty out of date. And Illustrator needs to go and update that text string. And you'll see that there are some other sort of funny things about the way that Arc exports text into an Illustrator file. So we'll go ahead and click Update. Make sure that you're clicking Update instead of OK, because if you click OK, then it will have this legacy text embedded in your document. So we're going to update it. It will think a little while. And then we'll get this map that looks pretty much the same as our export from Arc did. So the thing I'll draw your attention to first is that Arc has drawn layers in Illustrator, layers and sublayers. There's a single layer up here that is related to a particular data frame. So in our ArcMap document, we only had one data frame, and so there's only this one topmost layer, and it's called it layers because that's what the data frame was called. And then it's also created all these sublayers, and it really does a pretty good job of this. It's organized these sublayers uh, the same way that it organized the table of contents in ArcMap. And so we have a layer for the Graticule, which wasn't in our table of contents, but it's right up there at the top because it's at the top of the visual hierarchy. There's a layer for the frame. There also wasn't a layer in that in our table of contents, but the same goes. It's at the top of the visual hierarchy. And then we start getting into things like labels. So our labels are right here at the top, and there are sublayers for the labels of each of our different levels of cities that we created, and then sublayers for each of the uh, each of the different features that we exported. So we've got cities, highways, the the Spain and Portugal export, and then finally all the countries behind that. Let's dig in here a little bit into our cities four or five sublayer. So I'm just going to click the caret in, and then you'll see there's a group inside there. And if we click the caret for that, you'll see that it has all these little symbols, all these little green circles, but they're all embedded in this group with a clipping mask. Arc habitually puts clipping masks around everything that it exports because it wants to make sure that it's not drawing any features outside of this frame that it's so carefully drawn around your whole map. The clipping masks, on the other hand, make it really difficult to select things in your in your uh, layers menu because you can't just come up and select all the cities four or five and expect it to have the same appearance because this clipping mask is in here and the clipping mask doesn't have a fill or a stroke nor any of the other appearance attributes of these graphics and so. I find it really practical to just get rid of that clipping mask while we're doing our editing and then if you want to at the end go back and reintroduce these clipping masks for specific layers like for instance the countries that actually do need to get clipped off at the map boundaries then you can do that. But for the time being I'm just going to drag this clipping mask down into the trash bin down here and do away with it. I'm then going to make sure that everything is selected here and go up to object and say ungroup and that'll get all of those graphics outside of the group and that way they'll be more easily selectable. I can use the regular selection tool in order to select each one of those circles. So I'm going to repeat that process with the other cities layers. I'm going to go remove the clipping mask and ungroup. I'm just going to use shift control G in order to ungroup. And this is a little bit of a tedious process to go through at the beginning but it really does improve the workflow later on make your document a lot easier to work with. And I'm going to do the same thing with the highways. You can see that there are all these little separate paths for the highways. I'm going to remove the clipping mask by dragging it down to the trash and then select the whole layer and ungroup everything in there. And here's an example where the clipping mask actually was accomplishing something. There are these highways that are sort of stretching outside of our frame and now that we've removed the clipping mask those highways do stretch out into the frame. Go ahead and ungroup, and since there are so many highways, it's taking it a little while to, to ungroup everything. Just in the interest of time, I've skipped a little bit ahead in this process. I've removed all the clipping masks and groups from these other layers, 
and I'd like to draw your attention up here to the labels. So you'll notice if I drill into these labels sublayers, here we have not only a group that encompasses all the labels as a whole, but we actually have groups for each individual label and a clipping mask around each individual text string. And this is way overkill. I mean, we don't really need any clipping mask, but we definitely don't need one around each individual text label. And my way of going about solving this problem is to use a selection technique where we're going to select one of these text strings and then go and select all the text strings that have the same appearance as that text string. Now before we do that, let me just note that we should lock all these other layers so that we don't inadvertently select objects in them that have the same appearance as the text string that we're going to select. And I'm also going to go ahead and lock the other sublayers that have labels for cities because I'd like to keep my cities, just make this a little bigger so you can see it, I'd like to keep my cities four or five labels separate from my other cities labels. Now that I've done all that locking, I'll reopen that caret, select one of those cities, and then come up to the selection menu up here and go to same and ask it to select all of the labels that are unlocked, so all of the labels in this sublayer right here that have the same fill and stroke as this Braganka label right here. So I've selected all the labels that have the same fill and stroke and you can see if you open up some of these carrots that it skipped the clipping paths, it skipped the groups themselves because they don't have the appearance of these actual text labels and so it's just selected all the text labels. Now I can come up to my edit menu and hit cut. I could also hit control X and that'll put just those labels, it's grabbed them out of the groups and put just the labels into the clipboard. So that when I select cities, that topmost level of my sublayer, and then go to edit and paste in front, I'm using paste in front because that way it'll put the labels right back into the same spot that they were on the page. I'll get all those labels listed without their groups and without those clipping masks in the cities four or five sublayer. And then I can go back down to the very bottom where I still have all these groups with clipping masks in them, hold shift to select all of them, and then just dump them in the trash. You can go through and do that same process with these other cities labels. And while you're doing this process with the other cities labels, just make sure that you're keeping the label sublayers that you don't want to be affecting locked so that you can't be selecting from them. Okay, so now that we have all the labels out from underneath the groups and the clipping paths, I can come back and unlock everything so that we can work with it again. Our final step is going to be to make a slight edit to this text so that it actually is listed with its correct text size. If you go and click on the labels sublayer now, and then go up to window and type and open the character panel, you'll notice that all of these text strings that have been selected have this one point text size and we know that that's wrong. There's no way that these labels on this 8.5 by 11 page are a one point font. This is just yet another artifact of the way that ArcMap has exported its text and in order to correct for that all we need to do is move very slightly the position of those labels on the page and then move it back so that they're in the same spot that they started with. So I've selected the entire label sublayer. With the arrows on my keyboard, I'm going to push once on the up arrow, which will nudge those labels just slightly up on the page, and then once back down so that they've been nudged the same distance back down. And you can see that just by nudging the labels, it, we've popped the text size back to 7.92, which is the actual text size. So now you've made all the adjustments you need to in order to remove the artifacts of the ArcMap export and start working with your map and illustrator.